Hello everyone, this is Elliot Serrano for the Chicago Red Eye and geek to me coming to you once again from Villa Park and the Odeon Sports Center, where the Odeon is currently hosting the stars of TNA Wrestling. And I am joined here by the man we know as the Blueprint, Matt Morgan. Matt? Hey, what's going on, man? Dude, this is a total this is a total rush for me because um, you know, I'm a big fan of TNA, fan of you guys, uh, you. the stuff that you guys do, I really appreciate, especially what pro wrestlers do. Um, you are those athletes that really care about what the fans think. Yeah. You're not in it for the money. I mean, you're in it for the love. A little bit. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell us, uh, how's the show been? How's the life on the road been for you so far? Um, it's been great. It's been really good. And I'm glad you brought up the fan aspect of this business because so many times you hear the, the internet is so, uh, is out there. The, the buzzword, you know, is, is money and pro wrestlers and contract status and this and that. I think people lose track of what this is for. And it's for to be performing in front of fans. So, you know, a three hour ride here, a two hour car ride there, that ain't nothing because, at the end of the day, you're going to put a smile on a little kid's face or an adult's face. Bottom line, it's a fan's face that you're putting a smile or a frown on, depending on what <laughs> your role is here with TNA. And uh, it's cool because we do it a little bit differently here at these live events. We're a lot more fan-friendly. I know you're sitting there at home going, what the hell is fan-friendly? It just sounds like some BS term you just came up with to make your company sound better. No, we're fan-friendly because we do like autograph sessions at the end of our shows. And we, I walk up and I shake these fans' hands, every one of them if I can, you know, if we have the time to do, I shake hands and take pictures and sign anything they want me to. And that's, I would say 90% of our roster does that as well. And that's an experience you can't get anywhere else. So that's where I get the fan friendly term from. And again, another thing I really appreciate, especially TNA being, I mean, you are a, a smaller organization, but there's a real intimate atmosphere Good word. Yeah. with, with the, with the venues, yeah. um, uh, the locker room. Well, what, what, what do you, what has been your experience so far in the TNA locker room? I like it because, you know, getting back to what you're saying about not being in it for the money and things like that. I, I'll be quite honest. I, I make I make a better income, a comfortable income here than I did when I was in WWE, and so people have the misconception that because you work smaller venues or we might have smaller crowds here and there that we don't get paid or, or our pay structure isn't replicated to or you know the same as or similar to that of WWE's. I, I think that's you know I don't think that's necessarily always true. Um, but to answer your question, it's like you're being paid excellent. And so that's taken care of. So the, the mental worries and anguish of how's your wife while you're on the road? Is she going to take care of the bills while you're wrestling and busting your tail in these small towns and things like that that a normal wrestler usually has? I don't have to worry about that. Most of our guys here don't have to worry about that because Dixie Carter and the owner, other you know company uh, hierarchy uh, takes care of us financially. So that leads us to do the simplest job in the world, which is go out, have fun, and play Cowboys and Indians out there in front of the fans. <laughs> Honestly, it's what it is. Cool. And some of the guys, they get crazy egos and what we do. And it, and it drives me insane because at the end of the day, that's what this is. It's Cowboys and Indians. And um, it, it's, it's fun. It's still fun to me. It's what it is. It's still like being at recess in, in school to me. It's like being in gym class. It's like, you know, when you're in, you're in school all day, you can't wait to go out to recess at 12 o'clock. You can't wait to your basketball game later on that night at 7 o'clock. I get hyped the same way to this day for pro wrestling. Same exact way. Yeah, the difference, though, being uh, you're not going to get a concussion that frequently at recess, you would hold, unless you were jumping off the monkey bars or something. I mean, you, you know... <laughs> You can't tell. I mean, I know it's pretty obvious this guy is towering over me, and, and you, sir, are a really formidable-looking physical specimen, but you've had your share of injuries. Oh, hell yeah. Every one of us have. I've had, uh, luckily, I've only had two concussions with pro wrestling. I only two concussions, luckily. Well, it would have it would have been a lot more. I mean, I've had a lot of uh, veterans, you know, helping me with how to prevent concussions at all costs with chair shots and right. things like that, getting your hand up in time, things like that that are very important that I will try to pass forward to the younger generation that comes after me as well. Because how good are we to this business? No, forget that. How good are we to our families 10, 12, 15 years from now when my, you know, my brain is scrambled? Right. You know? Although, you ask me, I don't know how much of a difference getting your hand up in time really <laughs> exactly for a right. chair shot. I mean, exactly I, I've seen right. you guys take those chair shots both I, ways, and it, it, look, it both ways it looks bad. 
I, you're at 110 percent right. Like Kurt Angle just cracked me over with with a chair. I would say about a month ago on Impact, and I, I put a hand up because that's a natural reaction. If someone's gonna hit you with a chair. Would you just go? <laughs> no. If you're at a bar, someone you turn around, someone's gonna hit you with a chair. You're at least gonna try to defend yourself. It's a natural reaction. I don't get why guys don't do it more. Right. It doesn't mean you're tough, in my you're opinion. Kind of it, it means that you're trying to show you're tough, which means maybe you're not. I don't know. But uh, it's a natural reaction to do that. So I did that, and you still can get injured. Like, I had this, I had this big – I thought I broke part of my uh, – shattered part of my forearm, to be quite honest with you, because the lip caught my forearm the wrong way, I guess, accidentally. You know, height differential, you know, that comes into play sometimes with these chair shots. But can you imagine if that was my head is my point. Oh, goodness. I'll take a yeah. bruise on my forearm any day, wow. you know. Okay, so let's talk about something uh, – an activity that is not as, uh, as uh, physically taxing. Video games. <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah. You're, uh, you're a big video game fan? Absolutely. These guys, I mean, the roster of guys that we have here, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Creed, and Consequent, and um, uh, Jay Lethal, have all got me into playing Xbox. Oh. I, okay. I'll be honest. I'll be the first to admit I was the big uh, jock that would make fun of the guys and <laughs> you freaking little video game dorks. Put the thing away and watch a match. You know, stuff like that. And uh, here, and they got no. You gotta try this game. You gotta try the new uh, Left for Dead game for uh, Xbox or the new Batman Arkham Asylum. Uh-huh. I can't begin to tell you how addicting some of these games oh, are. Yeah. Oh, it completely, right. completely turned my uh, yeah my perspective around on video games. They're fun as hell. What, what's your favorite one right now? I beat Batman Arkham Asylum on Xbox just about three weeks ago. That has got to be my favorite game of all time. I beat it twice. That's how fun it was. It was a really good, good, good game. You do any uh, co-op play, like get together, like co-op. you, Consequences, uh, Jay Lee. Fall, see, now that's together. new. That's brand new to the Blueprint, the co-op. They're trying to, <laughs> I got to get the device, to, the gimmick to hook it up so I can get online. That's my next step. I mean, I, I played Marvel, uh, what was it, um, the Ultimate, Alliance, Ultimate, Ultimate Alliance. Alliance Part 2. I just beat yeah. that. I'm a day away, maybe half a day, maybe a few hours away, I'd say, from beating, uh, you know, was it, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh-huh. That's a great game, by the way. Yeah. It reminds me of Batman a little bit, but not as much as free play to roam, roam around where you want like Batman you could. Right. That's what made Batman so damn good. You can go wherever you want. Did you unlock the Joker to play as, you, as a Joker? Yeah. I don't have PS3. I, the PS3. Oh, that's right. That's the PS3. The PS3 you can play yeah. as Joker, which yeah. I heard was pretty cool. But yeah. I'm thinking about getting the PS3 just to play. What's the new one? Uncharted 2? Yes. Ah, oh, which is sweet. Uh, sweet. Sheik yeah. Abdul Bashir swears by this game. Yeah. So I'm going to get the PS3 just for that game. Alone. And it's a Blu ray player, too. You can't beat that. That's exactly how he sold it to me. I was like, <laughs> I don't care about a Blu ray. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, what's next for the Blueprint? Heavyweight Championship. Absolutely. Positively. That's, that's the only other place for me to go right now, in my mind. Um, I've set some lofty goals. My law, lo- my loftiest, the biggest goal that I'm setting right now for myself when I retire from this business is to be remembered as one of the most, ath- not just athletic, to be remembered as one of the most, the, the best big men this industry's had, a transcending giant. That's really important to me because big giants, big seven footers get a bad rap for just relying on their size and doing the whole Frankenstein act and wheel them out type thing and choke slam and call it a day. I really want to be the guy that, you know, like Undertaker did for me. I grew up watching him for so many years, and he was super duper uber athletic in a character that doesn't necessarily have to have him be athletic, but yet he still made it fit and work. And here I am going, wow, that guy is an athletic stud, you know? So when I became a wrestler, I wanted to portray the same thing and up the ante on the athleticism part. You know, there's a time and place. If I can really throw a drop kick, why wouldn't I do it? Like a seven-footers aren't supposed to. It's like being in a bar fight. If I have a good left hook, but I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be a righty, would I not use that left hook? Because seven footers are supposed to be throwing big, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, uppercut right hands because I'm a righty? No. You do what you, if you physically can do something, you should be able to do it. And there's a time and place for it. Sir, I gotta say, it's been a real pleasure. No, it's my honor, man. Yeah. And I'm fan. telling you, look for this man is a big man. Big, huge. <laughs> If you want to learn more about the stars of TNA Wrestling, you can visit TNAWrestling.com and, of course, see more interviews with the stars here on the Chicago Red Eye geek to me site at RedEyeChicago slash geek to me So, for the blueprint and the geek, thank you for joining us. This has been geek to me <laughs>